fourth graders and welcome back. I'm Mrs. Lomando here to talk to you all about decimals. Today we're going to do something that I think everybody is going to rock because it's so easy. We are going to add decimals. Let's start by checking out a little video about adding decimals and we'll get an overview of just how simple it is. Hi, I'm Rob. Welcome to Math Antics. In this lesson, we're going to learn about decimal arithmetic. But before we get started, if you don't already know how to do multi-digit arithmetic with regular whole numbers, be sure to watch our videos that cover those subjects first. That's really important because I'm just going to show you how you can modify the procedures that we already learned in those videos so that they work for decimal numbers. So if you don't know how to do those procedures already, this video won't make very much sense. Specifically, you should make sure you've watched the videos about multi-digit addition, subtraction, multiplication, and long division. If you know how to do the problems in those videos, then decimal arithmetic won't be too hard. That's because the procedures for decimal arithmetic are basically the same as they are for whole numbers. But there's a few important differences that you need to know about. And that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Are you ready? Let's start with an easy one. Multi-digit addition. When adding multi-digit whole numbers, the key was to stack the numbers up so that the ones place digits line up in a column, which ensured that all the other number places lined up in columns too. Then you just add up the digits in each column, starting with the ones place and working to the left. Well, adding multi-digit decimal numbers works the same way. The main difference is that instead of lining up the ones place digits when we stack the numbers, we line up the decimal points instead. But wait a minute. I mean, isn't that the same thing as lining up the ones place digits? Ah, yes it is. And that's because the decimal is our reference mark that always goes between the ones place and the tenths place. So lining up the decimal points is the same thing as lining up the ones places. It makes sure all the number places line up in columns. Now, you've probably noticed that decimal numbers can have different numbers of decimal digits. For example, 10.8 has only one decimal digit, but 5.34 has two decimal digits. And what that means is that when you line up the decimal points of the two decimal numbers, they might not form a nice column on the right edge. Some of the digits might be missing. But that's no problem. Remember, if there's not a digit in a particular number place, you can just put a zero there to help you keep track of things. Now that these numbers are lined up by their decimal points, we can add them column by column. But instead of starting with the ones place, like we always did with whole numbers, we start with whatever number place column is the furthest to the right. In this case, that's the hundredths place. So we'll start there. So we add the digits in each column, carrying or regrouping as needed, and we get 1614. So we're done, right? Wrong. There's one last really important step. Remember, we're doing decimal addition, so we can't just forget about that decimal point. We need to bring a copy of it straight down into our answer line so we keep the same reference point for our number places. Now we can see that the answer is really 16.14. That's not so hard, is it? And I've got more good news. Decimal subtraction works the same way. Decimal subtraction does work the same way. But today, we're just going to focus on addition. Keep it easy. So, when we add decimals, we line up the decimal points. Let's try some together. So, whenever we see it written horizontally across, we always want to write it vertically up and down. So, if our first one says 30 hundredths, plus six tenths. Wow, super easy. We always start in the hundredths place. So all the way to the right, six plus zero is six. Three plus zero is three. Must put that decimal point, that's it. Let's look at number two. 70 hundredths plus 20 hundredths. Again, we start all the way to the right. Zero plus zero is zero. Seven plus two is nine. Put your decimal point. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. 
It doesn't get much harder than this. All right, let's go ahead and put up our next two problems for three and four. So for three, we have 20 hundredths plus 15 hundredths. For number four, we have 30 hundredths plus 18 hundredths. Let's pause and find our two sums now. For number three, we start all the way on the right. You should have come up with 35 hundredths. For number four, we start all the way on the right. You should have come up with 48 hundredths. Super easy. Let's go on and do five and six. So five says 60 hundredths plus two hundredths. Six says 80 hundredths plus 14 hundredths. I was just pausing because I was like, did we just do these ones? No. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and solve our two problems. Regroup if needed. For number five, we should have 62 hundredths. For number six, we should have 94 hundredths. Easy, easy, easy. All right, let's look at seven and eight. For seven, we have 10 hundredths plus eight hundredths. For eight, we have 40 hundredths plus 11 hundredths. Oh my gosh, this addition is so simple. Go ahead and add those now. And we'll pause. All right, let's see what we got. For number seven, we should have 18 hundredths. For number eight, we should have 51 hundredths. Easy, easy, easy. All right, let's do two more. We'll go to nine and 10. And actually, yeah, we'll go to 10 too. I was just thinking to myself, we should probably have some ones where we have to regroup because these are super simple but they might come up in our form. All right, nine and 10, go ahead and solve. We'll pause while you solve. So for number nine, we should have 77 hundredths. And for number 10, we should have 22 hundredths. Now let's take a look at our form. Our form is gonna be a little bit trickier, but not much. Adding decimals is just so easy. All right, so here is our decimals lesson six form. Of course, you're gonna put your name. Again, you're gonna see everything written across. You wanna write your answers vertically, up and down. So we have 30 hundredths plus six hundredths. Our next one, 70 hundredths plus two hundredths. Number three, 20 hundredths plus 15 hundredths. Now it's getting a little trickier. Two and 35 hundredths plus four and 16 hundredths. Number five, seven and eight tenths plus 14 hundredths. And our last one, four and 39 hundredths plus 52 and four hundredths. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to check in with your teacher. Until next time, I'll see you then. Bye.